I want to start right off at the top with a very special guest. We're joined today by our neighbor to the south, the borough president of the borough of the Bronx, Vanessa Gibson. Vanessa and I served together in the New York State Assembly during her four-year tenure there. She went on to serve eight years on the New York City Council before becoming uh, Bronx Borough President, elected in November of 21 and taking office January of 2022. Uh, she is the, the next in a line of very dynamic leaders in the Bronx that we've had the chance to work with. And Westchester and the Bronx are very much tied together. There was a time before the creation of the city of New York where Westchester and Bronx were in fact one county. That's why you have uh, White Plains Road and Eastchester Road and Pelham Parkway in the Bronx. And you also have those very same jurisdictions here across the dotted line. We're linked by our transportation transportation routes that take us in and out of the city, the, uh, the highways and the mass transit routes. And we've worked together very closely with the Bronx in trying to get access from the eastern side of the Bronx and the eastern side of our county into Penn Station, which would be a really tremendous uh, ability to bring mass transit to areas that have not had it before. We work together on tourism because there's so many things that uh, are attractive in the Bronx right below the border of Westchester. And then right above the border in Westchester, we have MGM Grand and Yonkers and other things that really represented economic development for the area. I'm fond of saying that I went to college in the Bronx, my first full-time job was in the Bronx, and my first girlfriend was in the Bronx. That didn't work out, but the other things uh, were very important to me. And I think Westchester's future is very much tied to the Bronx, which is why we want to work closely with the Bronx leadership and have the best possible cooperative relationship that we can. We can prove that the city and the uh, suburbs can work together. And with a leader like Vanessa Gibson, we have a friend uh, who's done a great job for her borough, and we look forward to working with her in the future. And I look forward to bringing her to the microphones. So may I introduce the Bronx Borough President, the Honorable Vanessa Gibson. Madam President, I like calling you that. Thank you. Thank Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Westchester is anxious to hear you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Westchester. I am excited to be here for the Westchester Weekly. Uh, certainly, I want to acknowledge my good friend, uh, someone who I've known for years, uh, serving as an elected official in the Bronx, our county executive of Westchester County, George Latimer, our deputy county executive, uh, Ken Jenkins, thank you so much. And I am proud to say, Westchester County, you have phenomenal leadership in this great county. And as George has said, there is so much alignment between Bronx County and Westchester County. And during my four-year tenure in the New York State Assembly, George Latimer, as an assembly member at that time, was a good friend. We stood together on many many priorities such as affordable housing and pathways to home ownership, supporting our young people with pathways to college and careers, and so many issues that are very prevalent here across our great state. So it really is an honor to come along the highway to be here in Westchester County to really provide all of you an overview of what we are doing serving the 1.5 million residents that live in the Bronx County. I am the 14th Bronx Borough President. I am a first, the first African American and the first female to ever serve in this role. It is a tremendous honor stepping into this new leadership role for such a time as this. My Deputy Borough President, Janet Peguero, is also a first. She is the first Latina, the first Dominicana, and the first immigrant to serve ever as Deputy Borough President, and together, Deputy Borough President Peguero and I are proud to lead Bronx County. In the city of New York, five boroughs, we are the only borough that is led by two women. And I truly believe that it is happening not by design, but on purpose. And every day we wake up on purpose, with a purpose, realizing that it is our time to show the residents and families of Bronx County what they rightfully deserve. We believe that the Bronx is a borough of opportunities. It is a global destination. From our historic landmarks and open spaces, we are the greenest borough in the city of New York with Pelham Bay Park. Whether you are at Orchard Beach, which is our Riviera, you go to Little Italy or City Island, you partake in all of our restaurants and eateries. We are a borough that is thriving and striving. And every day, we are striving to make sure that we invest in our great borough. So a few priorities that we have as an administration today, I want to begin by talking about economic development because I believe that economic development is the pathway to prosperity. I believe that when you set up a family with a job, with a career, you are setting them up for life. 
We are proud to have incredible leadership running our economic development team. The Bronx EDC is led by Rob Walsh, who is the former SBS commissioner under former Mayor Michael Bloomberg. He and his team at BX EDC are tapping into money that has never been spent before. A few weeks ago, I joined our local congressman, Richie Torres, and BX EDC, and we announced a historic $10 million Bronx Community Fund Development Program. And this $10 million was approved by the New York Empowerment Zone, also approved by the US SBA Small Business Administration. This $10 million that we identified was through Empowerment Zone money that began with the Bill Clinton administration from 1994. You heard it right, 1994, this money has never been spent. So the New York Empowerment Authority gave us the approval to actually dispense $10 million in small business loans focused in the South Bronx area of Port Morris and Mott Haven, Bronx Community Board 1 and 2, and we're going to give out loans anywhere from $5,000 to $350,000 for many of our businesses. Because if we are to say that small businesses are the economic engine, the fabric and the foundation of our communities, then we have to do more to support them. And during the height of COVID-19, it was the small businesses that kept their their doors open, that kept people employed, that provided the opportunities. So they have had our backs during the greatest time of need, and now it's time for us to have theirs. So we're excited about this $10 million, and now I know you may be thinking, not every small business has the ability to pay back a loan. But we got something good for you because we are also actively working on grant opportunities for many of our small businesses. We will not leave them behind. We will allow them to strive and thrive, provide the local jobs, stimulate the economy, and make sure that we keep our borough operating. And in addition, economic development cannot happen without employment opportunities. And during the pandemic, Bronx County had an unemployment rate of 256 percent. Many of our hotel retail industries were decimated and many of our residents were no longer able to work and applied for unemployment. I'm proud to say that now we are at a 6% unemployment rate. And we're working closely with the New York State Department of Labor, the Commissioner Roberta Reardon and her team, and we are actively hosting job fairs in the Bronx all throughout our county to make sure that we connect young adults those that are justice involved that may have been incarcerated and we give them opportunities. We open doors so they can have the career pathways that they rightfully deserve. That is something that is very important to me because I truly believe that the way to transform our communities is through jobs and economic development. So the BX EDC is doing amazing work under the leadership of President Walsh and also our BICNI, which is the Business Initiative Corporation of New York, led by Rafael Roger. He and his team are doing fantastic work giving out loans, helping small businesses that need access to capital, building generational wealth, helping them with financial mastery and other support programs and technical assistance that many of our small businesses need. The third leg of the small business arm in our office is the Bronx Tourism Council. And its website is www.ilovethebronx.com. The easiest website you'll ever have, ilovethebronx.com. And it is led by Sulma Arsu Brown. She is also a first, she's the first Afro-Latina the first Garifuna woman from Honduras, she was an immigrant that came here from Honduras with her family and migrated right in the Bronx. She's an entrepreneur, she's an illustrator, she's a business owner, and she's leading our Bronx Tourism Council. Signature events that we have hosted in our tenure, Bronx Week, uh, as well as Bronx Restaurant Week and Tour de Bronx. Bronx Week is phenomenal, it's held every May, and we support Bronx businesses and we talk about everything good happening in our borough. From our small businesses, veterans, educators, first responders, so many of our incredible public servants, healthcare workers, heroes and sheroes, and we have a, a week long event. But because we're the Bronx, it's not just a seven day week, 
it is an 11 day week because we believe that the Bronx is the best place to live, work and raise our families. And we want to do more to make it even better. That is my job every day to make sure that Bronx County is better than the way I got it on January 1st, 2022. October is the month in which we hold Tour de Bronx. It's the largest free cycling event across the city of New York. And we had last year thousands of cyclists. Even if you're a beginner like me, I have not rode a bike in years and I got to learn again. Many of you were in that stage as well. Or you could be intermediate or you could be an advanced bike rider. But it's a part of our work to address health disparities and focus on health and wellness. So that we are encouraging cyclists and we're encouraging people to be a part of that. So that event, Tour de Bronx 2023, will be held on Sunday, October 22nd in our borough in the Bronx at 10 a.m. And we're starting on the Grand Concourse and 161st Street. For more information, again, visit the website, ilovethebronx.com. Now, moving on to some of our other capital projects, because as I said, we are a borough of opportunities. There are a number of significant capital projects that are really going to transform our county, but the entire city and state of New York. And a project that both your county executive and I share is Metro North Expansion. Metro North Expansion in the East Bronx with access to Penn Station. Four new stations are coming to the Bronx. $2.7 billion union jobs starting in the co-op city community in the Northeast Bronx, then going to Morris Park in the East Bronx, then to Parkchester Van Ness in the East Bronx, and then we head south to Hunts Point. These four new stations are going to be a game changer for the Bronx. And two stations in particular are going to provide a rezoning which will add to the density within those communities in adding more housing, supporting small businesses, boosting tourism, and really providing support for commuters in Westchester and the Bronx with easier access to Penn Station. Reducing our carbon footprint, getting commuters out of cars and on the Metro North. So we have already started on working groups with all four communities, the Business Improvement District, the Bronx Chamber of Commerce, all the elected officials that represent these neighborhoods, and we are actively supporting the Metro North expansion. If you understand that this work is about transportation equity and transportation justice, we want to make mass transit accessible to everyone, regardless of how much you have in your bank account. We wanna connect commuters to Manhattan and Westchester and points north and make sure that it is accessible, it is affordable, and it is convenient right in your own neighborhood. So I am excited about the Metro North expansion and I look forward to the day in 2027 when we officially open our four new Metro North stations with access to Penn Station. In addition, going to the West Bronx, I want to call your attention to this amazing project called Reimagining the King's Bridge Armory. For many of you, you may know the King's Bridge Armory is the largest armory in the nation. It is three times the size of the Bedford Union Armory in Brooklyn in Kings County. And this armory has unfortunately been vacant for 50 years, originally a military base, and during the pandemic, a site for food distribution and booster and vaccination shots and other health-related issues, but we had no plan. There were two proposals put forth years ago by previous administrations, and unfortunately, they did not pass. But now, third time is the charm. And because of the new leadership, the first female Bronx Borough president and a female local council member, Pierina Sanchez, and all of the elected officials and our great governor, another female, Kathy Hochul, we are all invested in transforming the Kingsbridge Armory. The vision we have put forth is one of community engagement, supporting small businesses, economic development, vertical farming, looking at food access, healthcare-related services, recreation, potentially the home of salsa, a new 
new museum dedicated to salsa. We have so much space and opportunity, but most importantly, we want the residents of Kingsbridge to feel good about their neighborhood, to be proud of where they live, work, and raise their families. And for years, they have seen this big armory lie vacant for all these generations. We are no longer going to be first in everything bad and last in everything good when it comes to Bronx County. We're going to set families and businesses up for success and not failure. The Kingsbridge Armory, over the last nine months, we put together a working group called Together Kingsbridge, working with the New York City Economic Development Corporation and a myriad of stakeholders from colleges, healthcare partners, elected officials, non-for-profits, clergy and faith leaders. And over nine months, we had working groups, advisory boards, community meetings, draft sessions. And I'm so proud to say after nine months, we got 4,000 ideas, 4,000. And we put it together in a report that was recently released earlier this month that is entitled Together Kingsbridge because we believe in the vision of Kingsbridge. We believe that we deserve better. And I'm excited about what lies ahead. Over the next several months, we will be working with developers as an RFP is administered to get proposals. And once that process commences, we will be able to announce an award winner through the city, and then we will begin to get to a plan. I am so thankful to Governor Hochul for committing $100 million, to Mayor Eric Adams in the city of New York for also committing $100 million, Council Member Sanchez, who was able to allocate $12 million. So the money is coming in. All we need to make sure is we execute the plan that we truly come up up with. I want to call your attention to health care because I believe as a county that we can do more to address the challenges that so many of our residents face around accessing primary care and mental health services and wraparound services. The Bronx is unfortunately a borough that has a lot of need. We have some of the highest rates of asthma, heart disease, obesity and diabetes. And we also have one of the highest rates of infant mortality and maternal mortality and morbidity. As your Bronx Borough President, I am dedicated to this work. I have a maternal health care consortium that works with a number of doulas and midwives and birth workers out of many of our hospitals, including Montefiore, Albert Einstein, and public hospitals like Lincoln, North Central, and Jacoby. And we've been working relentlessly for the year and nine months of being in office to put together a plan on what a birthing center looks like. Patient-centered care that is culturally sensitive and language diverse that meets clients where they are. Black women are nine times more likely than their sisters to die of childbirth related complications while they are giving birth. Giving birth should be the greatest blessing and you should not have to lose your life over that. So we believe that the answer is a birthing center and we're going to be issuing a birthing report very soon that will talk about our plan. And in addition to maternal health, you all understand HIV AIDS rates are very, very high in the black and brown community. We have an HIV AIDS round table. We have a round table dedicated to diabetes. We're also talking about fibroids and lupus and so many health related issues that are preventable that have really exacerbated many of our women and women of color in our county. So we're going to be working very closely on that as well. If I go to the South Bronx, you know we represent the Hunts Point Produce Market right in the South Bronx. And this is one of the largest markets we represent in the city of New York. Thousands of men and women representing Teamsters show up every day to provide produce for 70% of our restaurants, supermarkets, grocery stores, and bodegas in the Bronx and the city of New York. We have a plan to add 1,000 new jobs to transform the entire produce market working with New York City EDC. We're going to make all of our trucks electric, which is important, reducing our carbon footprint, and we're going to make sure we have modernized refrigeration plants and everything that you know you deserve in a market such as Hunts Point. So that plan, we've been able to work with Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and members of Congress in the New York delegation, $400 million already dedicated to the Hunts Point produce market. So I'm very, very proud of that. 
signature projects for our borough that we have taken on from our predecessor, number 13, Ruben Diaz Jr. You all know the Bronx is the birthplace of hip hop. It is the 50th anniversary of hip hop, started on August 11th, 1973. Because we realized that hip hop has been a global empire, a multi-billion dollar industry that started in the Bronx, we are solidifying that by the creation and construction of the first ever universal hip hop museum in the West Bronx called Bronx Point, coupled with 600 units of affordable housing and an early child care center. We are not playing when it comes to development in Bronx County. We will not leave residents behind. We will not break promises, but rather we serve with commitment, consistency, compassion, dedication, and intention. We believe in public and private partnerships. All of the developers that we work with that align with our values, that support union wages, local jobs, MWBE provisions, supporting those who have often been forgotten and not had these opportunities. The Universal Hip Hop Museum is going to be a global destination, an incredible visitors institution and the preservation of hip hop, and we are so very proud of that. We in Bronx County truly believe that we are on the cusp of a new renaissance and there is nothing impossible for us to do. New leadership is here, we're getting things done and we wanna make sure that we're working closely with our colleagues in Westchester County because we share so much together. I thank you all for watching. I hope that you are excited about what is happening in your neighboring county of Bronx and I wanna say thank you again to your county executive, George Latimer and Ken Jenkins for their leadership leadership and inviting us here to be on this show to give our updates on behalf of the great borough of the Bronx in the city of New York. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. you. Outstanding thank job, you, thank Madam you, thank President. You. That is Vanessa Gibson, the Bronx Borough President, a good friend, and uh, she just gave you the, uh, state of the state of the borough message. <laughs> in terms of the Bronx. And what this does, Vanessa, that justifies it. My dad lived in, the, in Brooklyn before moving up to Westchester County after World War II. Since I did go to college in the Bronx and spent a lot of time in the Bronx, I used to have arguments with him. You never win arguments with your father, I learned. <laughs> but uh, how much better the Bronx was than Brooklyn. I wish he was alive today because I would tape this and make sure that he saw exactly what's happening in the Bronx. No knock on Brooklyn, but we're next door to the Bronx, so a little partial to the Bronx. And thank you for being with us today. Mm -hmm. It's an outstanding report. Uh, I point out, which I think most of us know, is that uh, we do share so many things in common. Uh, our B-Line bus system uh, goes over the border and connects into the Bronx, the subways uh, in the northern part of the Bronx. Uh, we share uh, two state senate districts and a congressional district with the Bronx. We're very happy that state senators Jamal Bailey and mm -hmm. Natalia Fernandez, Congressman Jamal Bowman, represent both of our two boroughs. And we look forward to working together with the future on so many initiatives. Thank you for being with us here today. Vanessa Gibson, Borough President of the Bronx.